an unbelievable drive for Max Verstappen. That was when the rain is the great equalizer, Max Verstappen is not affected because that was just a crazy, crazy drive from him. To come from effective P17 all the way to first, and like that was like he was almost at first by the safety car in the lap 34 or whatever it was. So just insane. But before we start, subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you got a second, it really does help the channel out, and let's get started. So obviously, Sao Paulo was very favorable for Max Verstappen. That is pretty much, if not almost, the driver championship done with. Uh, Lando Norris needs 21 points per race, which there's not that many sprints left to help you out to cinch up the driver's championship, so it's probably... That's a, that's a pretty far chance for that to happen. So let's go through some of the results. We have Verstappen, Ocon, Gasly, Russell, Leclerc, Norris, Sonona, Piastri, Lawson, Hamilton, Perez, Behrman, Botas, Alonso, and Zhao. We also have Sainz, who crashed out in the wall. Uh, Colapinto, who had an awful, awful crash on the uh, going into the concrete barriers. Hulkenberg, which was technically disqualified. Um, Albon, who didn't make the race, and Stroll, who crashed before he even got done four laps, uh, four corners. So the biggest surprise here, though, is the Alpines. They were just on pace pretty quick. Like, people who should have passed them did not. And they made the right call on the pits with Max Verstappen. Just, like, excellent all over from the team and from them. This was... We'll talk about the Max versus Norris kind of story throughout the race. Because this late race, at the very start looked like it was all going to go Norris's way. It looked like he potentially could get first place and that Max was going to be way, way down and maybe be kind of where Perez is finished off, maybe a little bit ahead, like finishing 8th, ninth, maybe 7th, something like that, if something crazy happened. Uh, but to see the total script flipped was crazy, and Max was fast right from the get-go. He passed five cars on the opening lap. He went around the outside on turn three, and passed a big group of cars, including Perez, Hamilton, and a bunch of other people there. Uh, and then this is lap 32, just before uh, the red flag that was brought out. And Verstappen is in second, making a 15 positions. So I don't think he needed the red flag. He was, I get you make your own luck around here, right? So he got lucky with the red flag and he got to change his tires, but he stayed out. And he knows that they go right from enters to red flags. Very, not very often do we actually see wet tire running. And I think the sport is pretty broken for that. You have this tire that they have available to them where the working range is like this. And there's no point in putting it on because it means you have to take another pit stop. And um, Ruth Busca Divey uh, mentioned that like it's not a tire that's used because there's no point. They're, the chances of them going to a red flag or a sliding back towards an inter tire is so easy that there's no way you're going to put enough laps in to cover off another pit stop on that wet tire because as soon as it goes either way you're either stopped and you change to whatever tire it is probably inter and then the other way is it loses four five six seconds of the lap when it's not in its optimal range so that that wet tire they could just get rid of it as far as i'm concerned it's a, there's no point in having it whatsoever it doesn't do anything yeah, so uh, got a little bit lucky, but again, he made his own luck. He stayed out. He knew that was going to happen. That was great from the team. We saw that come from Gasly, Ver, uh, Gasly, Ocon, and Verstappen. And we saw Russell and Norris come in just before that, and I was begging at the TV for him not to come in. Russell was very angry over the radio because he said that that was going to happen. And, like, Mercedes should know that. Yeah, McLaren should know that. No, I changed my mind. McLaren doesn't know that. They make awful calls. They're almost as bad as Ferrari right now. This is <laughs> this is the cool down room. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about this. So the other thing that Max did is he did this without a rear gunner. Like Perez was nowhere near helping Max through the whole race. And this is Perez. This is the cool down room taking a slight laugh at Perez wiping out at the first lap. Uh, he did fight his way through, but to have five cars go out and still not make it into those points positions is pretty sad as far as I'm concerned. Oh well, maybe next year, Perez. This is the Alpine story. Uh, they went from P9 in the Constructors' Championship to P6. 33 hollow points. I don't think Haas and RB saw that coming. RB had a great weekend. I mean, they did really well considering, but not as good as Alpine with a double podium finish 
from a car that really, at the start of the year, was fighting with Sauber. So that's really bizarre to see. It does, the great equalizer is the rain, and those two drivers are actually really good. The car doesn't really matter, because in the rain, hell, the McLarens didn't look fast, neither did Norris Piastri, they looked slow, Hamilton looked slow, he's the guy great in, in the rain, so hard to say. Let's keep going through this. We could go through every accident that happened during the race, but instead I would just show you this live footage from the Brazil Brazilian Grand Prix. There was just so many. Like, I took notes of all of them. I have I have four pages of... I have five pages of notes here of people going off, getting penalties. There was some crazy stuff. I will quickly go through it as fast as possible. But there was just so many off, so many penalties. So many incidents, so much stuff that it's easier just to show you this. Uh, don't include Max Verstappen in this because he had a flawless race. He went slightly wide in one corner and they didn't really advertise it. He lost eight tenths of a second and that was the only mistake he made. He also did, and I did write this down on the last pa uh, page, 19 fastest laps. He was taking his first corner. Let's get off this stupid page because I can't stand it. He was taking his fir the first corner really close on the inside and he was using so much grip there now, i didn't see anybody else doing that uh, even the people that tried to do it couldn't get that braking right because the way he did it he was braking on the inside which is really weird that's kind of the wrong side you want to be on for a wet uh, kind of run through there uh, because of the way the rain was going across the road normally you'd going to go on the outside where the rubber isn't in but because it's so tight through those uh, first little chicanes uh, in brazil he was using the inside there and using tons of grip on the inside there and he passed a bunch of different people. He passed Piastri. It looked like maybe those rumors about Piastri going to Red Bull are correct because he just looked like he let him through. He didn't fight him at all. And I don't think Piastri even thought he was gonna make a move because Max was making moves from six car lengths back, maybe even more than that. It looked like they were dies, but he was just so confident on the brakes. Okay, this was the start infringement i think this is probably the biggest thing so what's supposed to happen here and i'll be honest i didn't know this starting procedure for aborted laps so what happened is lance crashed his car going slowly hit the wall and then he was fine and all he had to do was drive back on the track but he decided that going through the gravel was the best idea there's a little patch of gravel on the outside of turn four and it's just so people slow down so they don't hit the wall it disappears after a while there's a patch of gravel there that you can drive around this way or you can drive around that way and lance decided to go straight through it for some reason and then got beached <laughs> i don't know what he thought it was going to happen if it was dry he probably could have got through because the compacted sand you can kind of drive through but it's wet. Have you walked on a wet beach before, Lance? You should really go outside and touch grass because it's not going to work in one of these cars. You're just going to hit that wall of dirt and just stop. It's, it's ridiculous. I don't know what he was thinking. Anyway, so they went around and they had to abort the start. Now, in an aborted start, what will happen on the grid is if somebody has the wrong grid position or somebody stalled or something like that, you'll have an aborted start. You'll come around and you'll do a second start. That's what they were doing. The, if it had been on the grid, but it wasn't. They were trying to retrieve a car. So this procedure is under investigation and you could see some of these people getting penalties. I don't know who it would be. I had them down who didn't. Um, who didn't take off? Botas, Zhao, Verstappen, Colapinto, and Sainz did not leave the line. They waited for these lights to go green because technically this isn't to tell you that you need to go. This is to tell you you need to sit the hell still and everybody's gonna come out on the track and service the cars because they're gonna do a total reset. They'll do another in-bed lap, a formation lap, and then they'll do the start. Uh, but I think Norris and some of the other guys up front were thinking that it was another installment lap and they were gonna do the start, uh, which would make sense. And there were some people outside of positions here. Uh, it should have been Albon's spot empty, uh, but it wasn't. You can see Colapinto down here that spot should be empty and everybody should be moved back one because that's Lance Stroll and this one up here. So you got somebody out of order here because these guys are supposed to be in there. Somebody was out of order. So I think maybe McLaren, if they hollered over the radio, they thought that that was why they had an aborted stop rather than Matt, uh, Lance being out on track, uh, being recovered on track. I'm not sure. Uh, but this should be investigated after the race. And to be honest, 
everybody should get a penalty he went there yes Lando Norris technically leads the field so he would be the one because they're just following him uh, but everybody would be except for those five people I mentioned who didn't go until this light goes green which tells you you need to go um, everybody else that moved technically should get a penalty and should move back I guess I don't know it doesn't make any sense to me but they noted like the first five guys I guess I don't know Weird. Okay, let's keep going through. Um, the red flag. The safety car is one thing. And then we'll talk about the red flag. This is Colapinto. This is when he crashed out. I feel really bad for him. And this is why I'm really only talking about it because I think Colapinto had such a following here at Brazil. It's essentially his home race. It's the closer you're going to get to Argentina. And there's no Brazilian driver there this year. So you really have this opening spot of all these people hollering for a local boy. And Colapinto is pretty close there. Argentina and Brazil don't like each other in football, but not really in F1. So everybody was hollering for Colapinto. And I think he crashed unnecessarily. Why? Because they brought the safety car out. These guys were driving around with intermediate or wet tires perfectly fine. There wasn't really much of an issue. You had guys going off here and there, but it wasn't dangerous. It was bucketing it down. But they were already going 140 kilometers an hour most on most parts of the track. That's safety car speeds. That safety car goes somewhere between 100 and 140 kilometers an hour. They try to gap it up and, and they're always hollering on the radio for it to go faster, but that's about what it goes anyway. And that's what Ruth said over the over, uh, over uh, Formula One. She said, they're already going safety car speeds. What else do you want from them? They're just out there being as safe as they can, but they're doing it at their own pace, correct? So they're able to keep that downforce where they need it and they're able to use the whole track and they don't have to worry about cars in front of them. They have, they're have way gapped out. They have a whole track to drive around. And at this point, there's only like 17, 16 cars on track. So it's a huge amount of track to do all that. And they were gapping each other right out. But they didn't do that. They brought the safety car out, said, oh, that's way too unsafe. And then bunched them all up. So now they're, they're doing this Constantina thing and braking and then trying to speed back up to keep the tires warm. And then they aquaplaned and a bunch of crashes happened. The safety car caused that accident. It, it didn't help the situation. They shouldn't have brought a safety car out at all. It should have just kept going around. Yes, they needed to retrieve Hulkenberg and he ended up getting going and getting disqualified because he, the, the marshals touched the car and then he drove off. But still, they shouldn't have brought the safety car out. I think they're in a situation now where it is more dangerous and you're going to have more people crashing out and causing a red flag if you if you're really that worried about it just call the red flag right away none of the safety car driving around causing these guys to crash we see these cars can't do those lowest speeds and keep their tire temperatures anywhere where they need to be so you're just just rolling the dice which guy's going to crash and causing a red flag so just call it right away it just doesn't make any sense to me the fia are such crap this year and this was the uh, uh williams guys kind of just they you know they're in a in a bit of trouble here because they didn't have now i suspect they didn't have enough time to do albon's car but i think what they really weren't saying is they didn't have enough parts to even put albon's car out there and they used a used gearbox for Colapinto's car which is bizarre that's not something that you really want to do you don't haul a used gearbox out of the bin and put it on the car maybe if you're going to go do a testing day or like a film day or something like that but not to race in so Calipindo's car was a franken car anyway i didn't really think it was going to make it so he was competitive out there sort of for like the mid-teens or whatever but like really it was, it was pretty sad for him to have that happen and i think that's a big a big faux pas from the fia i think they need to figure out what they want to do with these wet tires because if you can't run around on wet tires and you have to call a safety car as soon as you get anywhere near that, you're just waiting for these guys to crash as soon as you drive around slowly on a track. But aside from that, let's go through a few other things here. So, Risk of Rain was 100%. It did come in and go out and come in and go out. It was pretty all over the place. Uh, there was one point when they did call that safety car that it was dumping it down, but it was really only going to last for... Two or three laps and we soon as soon as they pulled the red flag and they came in it stopped raining and it was pretty much just uh, evacuating water out on track to get going uh, it was very warm today which was odd and the track was drying 
at the very first part of the race. Uh, Lance locked his rears up. Uh, they aborted race start. We kind of went over all that. I assume that they'll get a penalty, but if it's the whole field except for those five, it's very hard to implement, which is why I think they immediately said, we'll do it after the race because we don't know what's going to go on. The second start, Russell, Sonona, and Lawson noted for start, uh, start infringement after the race. Yeah, um, Behrman. Uh, Behrman was having a really hard time. He spun out himself probably at least a half a dozen times. Keep in mind, this is his first wet race in Formula One, and to do it at Brazil, which is a really hard track to drive in the rain, is a lot of asks. He also got a 10 second penalty. Some of the other stuff, uh, that yo-yoing thing that happened in the sprint race, that's obviously just a dry stuff. As soon as you take DRS away, that didn't happen anymore. It was a little bit, but not a lot. What else do we have here? Oh, Liam Lawson. Liam Lawson was investigated with Hamilton. Liam Lawson was investigated with Perez. Liam Lawson was investigated with Piastri. Now Piastri ended up getting the 10 second penalty and that's why he fell down to eighth here, which is pretty bad. Uh, Norris couldn't go any faster. That's as good as he could do to get to Leclerc, and it ended up hurting Piastri in the end. Not much really you can say about that. Uh, both those cars didn't look very good today. Yeah, so Lawson was not making friends today. Uh, he did end up finish P9, which is a really good result, but uh, to be honest, uh, he was fighting with Perez again, and then he was fighting with Piastri, and then he'd end up hitting Hamilton, so he's... I don't think he's going to be liked if he ends up entering that team next year. Uh, Hockenberg got disqualified, they touched the car. Oh, the gaps! After the red flag was over and they came out, man, the gaps were just crazy. There was so much gapping out there. There was, uh, from the front, there was two seconds, three seconds, five seconds, three seconds, two seconds, three seconds, three seconds, five seconds. That's how far each one of those guys were apart. It was almost an entire track. And then you got to like 10th and all that fighting that was going in there. But the, the gaps between everybody was just crazy near the middle of the race. And the safety car from Sainz. Well, Leclerc made a huge error and that's where he lost out to Russell. And he almost lost out to Norris, but then Norris just couldn't. Without the DRS, and I think that tricky wing that they changed out for McLaren really hindered them. They went a step too far. They looked really quick some of the other days and then Today, they looked particularly slow. They're really fast in the middle section of the track, but it doesn't help because you can't pass there. So I think they took um, some rake into the wing and they really should have raked it out more like this. So uh, th they were just too slow in the straights and both of them commented on that during the race. Yeah, that was pretty much all my notes. It was a good race. It was very exciting, very disappointing. I'm a McLaren fan, so it was a bit of a, uh, amazing from Alpine. It's good to see the smiling faces of Akon and Gasly up there. And the cool down room was really cool too because they were talking to each other. Normally it's the same kind of eight guys, seven, eight guys in there. And they don't really say all that much because media duties but Ga Gasly and Akon were like yeah hey Verstappen what's up because we're in this room we didn't expect to be here they were so happy so it was great uh really to note the the astounding win from Max though he was charted 17th on the grid and he finished 19 seconds ahead of Akon <laughs> so, so crazy I can't believe he put in that many fastest laps he should get a couple points for putting all those in. There was every single one. It was like every other lap was a fastest lap from him. He was just pumping them in and pumping them in. Crazy, 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 crazy. Uh, that's the Constructors, uh, the Drivers' Championship. Pretty much over, though. I wouldn't expect too much talk about that anymore. I think, really, this is the, this is one of the only times for Norris to do it. I think next year, I don't think it'll be Max. You're going to have a Hamilton at a Ferrari who look very strong this year. You're going to have McLaren, but, like... If Piastri is as consistent as he is this year, next year, I don't think Norris is the number one driver, to be perfectly honest. I think Piastri is a more consistent, more cool-headed driver that if he gets in the position where he could win the world championship, that he would be able to keep his head on his shoulders to do it. Who knows will be who will be at Red Bull? Who knows where will Red Bull will be next year as far as competitiveness? They don't have Adrian Newey anymore, and they've lost a lot of people. So... They could be nowhere as well. I, I think it'll be a Ferrari year next year, to be perfectly honest. And maybe if Kimi, Kimi Antonelli and Russell can wrangle that through. Although Hamilton was complaining a lot about the bumpiness of the car. It was not right. Same with Fernando Alonso. He almost didn't finish the race because his back hurt so much. So there's something wrong with that car as well. Anyway, subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a second. And I'll see you guys in two weeks for the next race.